wait for it. Wait, wait for it, Pika. The plane was going by. We had to. It's March. Guess what? We opened up the windows. I. It's not me, but you know, it might be suffering from houseitosis in here. Indeed. Um. Hi. It's Wednesday, Hump Day. So hump this day, lest it may hump you without your consent. Uh, I'm wearing my Bill Belichick hoodie. I've had this for 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 a long time. It was a parent. It was a gift from my parents years ago. I used to wear this like setting up for brunch for seven years when I was the brunch chef at a very popular local rest restaurant there was a yeah work sundays for years now i don't i'm very grateful what does this have to do with comic books hi <laughs> it's the comics talk with reverend sully and it's new comic book day and we answer the questions that you have on your mind what is on the list of funny books to buy on this, our new comics book day, this Wednesday of ours, Wednesday the 6th of March. Remember, we will beware the Ides of March next week. And then also shake a leg and dance a jig to St. Pod Podrick. But you know, until then, it's just another week on planet Earth. And... Um, but it's all but but every Wednesday is something special, something new, something you know I've been looking forward to, and hopefully you too. And it's good to see you. Thank you for tuning in. It is time for the new comic book show, and we're gonna see what's out there for new comic books when we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 that's 88 different print publications to purchase this very wednesday this new comic book day and uh what will be on the shelves when i get there to my local comic book shop i don't know i i, I you know i had to get a pull list in order to cope with you know the end of the uh, the unavailability of the titles that i seek kind of takes the fun out of things in a way too it makes everything so obligatory yet the world moves the world spins the world tends time is the fire in which we burn ain't that true yeah dr soren that's right i was from star trek generations i'm a huge trekkie behold my eagle moss and dvds and Blu-rays. I am a Star Trek fan. I can't chapter verse it anymore. If I ever could. Um, such is the spiritual life, though. It's about like letting go of things. It's like, yes, I've watched them all. Can I remember every like season number, episode number, and episode title anymore? I kind of you know, I kind of don't give a shit anymore, but I'm continually impressed, especially with younger fans that do. And um, I, I'm still here for those conversations. I really am. I, I truly am here for those conversations. I have to change my hat. This is starting to itch. Not to say anything. That's my Dell's coffee hat, but I have to wash it. You know, it gets pretty dusty in here in the um, in the the Boston studios that I actually you might hear that now because it's been off. I put it on the lowest setting, but it's always on. I have like two air filters in my room going at all times. And um, yeah, <laughs> I clean them like once a month. It's like living on the, in the ISS, the international space station. We have 88, titles to check out this month we go to this place called league of comic geeks.com um where we uh, share the screen and um no not your match page sully you silly sully you silly billy let's see we started at the bottom of the list too 
because it's more fun that way. We, you know, there's Lady Death, Demonic Demons, Demonic Omens number one for four ninety nine. Um, that's Brian Polito's Lady Death. He's like the great granddaddy of crowdfunding. He like he, he invented this shit. <laughs> That's cool. I, I was never into Lady Death. I remember seeing this like the entire time, though, on the shelves and stuff. It was like major indie stuff. It was, you know, and just, I don't know. What else is out? The Cauldron of Horror from AC Comics. Look, it's a woman in a vulnerable position being victimized by a male, a white man. I don't fall for that stuff. That's all academic stuff. You can lose that stuff with me. I mean, I'm just, yeah. I'm one of the proletariat. I'm blue collar. I'm low class. I'm cat, you know, just, I'm from the projects. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, you can try that on somebody else. Let's see. Ninja high school issue 193 from Antarctic press. Let's look this one up. I, Cause you know, I like just checking out comic books. Maybe I would like, you know, app superverse title or is it AP bikini Clad Power Rangers. Can you actually use that? Hey, look, it's Kate Winslet, ladies and gentlemen. She's a beautiful, age-appropriate woman for me. Um, Beach Blanket Boomers continues. The Bikini Sentai G Rangers go a spying on their arch enemies. Can they sneak in like Flint, or will they be overwhelmed by the zombie hippies? You've got my attention. You might, you could have my four ninety nine for thirty two pages. Uh, we have the writer artist Ben Dunn um, and artist Steve Ross. No, no discussions. But if when we shrink the page, we can see future solicits. I love this Ninja High one ninety one cover here. Okay, this came out last year. This is um, a Super Mario three tribute cover i love that but yeah and i like the the rosie the riveter a cover you know and uh april 24th see they, they, that's another wow 194 issues ninja high school i've never heard of that ain't that cool and that's why we come here and that's why we congregate and talk about comic books all the comic books that we haven't gotten to yet. Let's see. Let's we blow this up a little bit. Who's still buying Batman? Let me know. Um, Chip Sadarsky's Batman, hit and run, hot and cold, uh, wet and dry. It has been the best of both worlds. It's been terrible, and it's been pretty darn good, especially when we're getting outstanding interior art by Jorge Jimenez. Uh, those have been the ones that I've been buying literal physical copies of. And we have all these ads. That's that's okay. Do I, you know? Do I need an ad blocker? Do I do, do I have to buy that? Here's a great cover. I've been liking X Men by Jerry Duggan. Like you know, I'm like the black sheep of my of my um, of my comics aficionado friends. Um, I don't mind the Duggan stuff so much. Oh, well, actually, but we, we haven't even talked about Batman 145 in detail yet. We just stopped the weekly Joker Year One three issue arc. Ah, the following Joker Year One stunning reveals. What? I don't recall anything. I read all three of those issues a few times too. Some of the art was really good. It was really like Billy Pilgrim, like disjointed, like you know Batman. It, uh, Batman himself, Bruce Wayne, was not unstuck in time. Actually, he was once, and that was called The Return of Bruce Wayne back in the Final Crisis days, and that was written by Grant Morrison. Ta da! <laughs> but, um, so we, there's been a new issue of Batman every week for a couple of weeks now. And maybe it's going back to a monthly. We'll find out in just a second, though. But this is Legacy issue number 910. It's $4.99 for 40 pages. Um, Batman must engineer an escape from Zur's prison. But what dark secret does Zur hold now? <laughs> That's a game changer for the Dark Knight in the entire DC universe. See, since we've seen the solicits for the absolute power summer event and the dark trinity of amanda waller 
Zurinar inside of the failsafe body and um, the the being known as Brainiac Queen. We will. Um, I, I have absolutely no interest in buying any of these anymore. Even with the this one has Jorge Jimenez art and it's beautiful, but there's no allure to it. I mean, what's going to happen? Well, Zurinar is going to end up being, you know, in the summer event. So there's like really nothing going on. We have five variant covers. And um, is this still edited by Bell Ben? Nope. Editor by Katie Kubert. Q- Cuber- so, yeah, I mean, but are the other bat titles still Ben Abernathy? Yep. And so solicited at least two more issues. Maybe it, uh, it will go to 150 and then it all stop, start over again with another issue one. That's how it goes. But the X Men is the X Men is doing that. There are starting, starting, and they're start, they're stopping, they're starting over with a brand new issue one. It's going to be nothing like I kind of envisioned. I was hoping that there would be like a usage of something such as the Siege Perilous, where everyone wakes up in an ideal age and um, and, and new and status quo. In the mansion, and so the solicits for the for the relaunch stuff have been all pointing towards spinning out of the Krakoan age. And um, yeah, besties with buddy bloody blades, bloody buddy blades, yayzies. Kate Pride and Eliana Rasputin have been best friends for a long time. They've had good times and they've had bad times. But one thing that they can agree on, always stomping anti-mutant bigots' heads. These fascists, bigots. Um, it's all over X-Men right now. And it's like those little buzzwords of media. This is It's not about cultural literacy. This is about... Um, they're just it those buzzwords have so much weight to them that it's like it's impossible to separate them from the real world's connotations and especially culture the, the so-called culture war and especially the um the complete and utter overuse and labeling with those terms and um we have four five six seven see this is these are three different covers but they're all like one's a foil one's cardstock and one has a trade dress the ones without the trade dress are known as virgin variants and that's a beautiful psylocke too david nakayama and then i love oh wow look it's mark brooks it's just a floating head oh Yay. And I like this a lot. This is this is in the tradition of the early 1990s bubblegum cards. You know, you call them, you know, trading cards. And uh, this is the Mark Nil armor that Tony just used. So it's it's a, a fusion of now with it done in this retro style. I really like that cover a lot. You know, but I'm still not going to buy it. I read it, though. I'll tell you this much. I, I, I'm reading it. Yeah, this is in my, um, usually contained in my digital pirate chest. Arg. I've been reading all these X-Men titles. I have for months now. I'm completely tuned in to what's going on with the X-Men since the, basically, like, since Fall of X started, too. Um, right after the, the, the Hellfire Gala is when I started getting reading x-men monthly basically again or weekly rather because there is an x family of titles and it's on the trade dress fall of x and it's been it, it's the thing it's the x thing and uh i don't know maybe you can find different words like the, outside of bigot and fascists and i mean because those are always applied to people with conservative values by liberal and progressive minded people so it's like you're, you're dragging you're, you're dragging your real world shit 
onto the nice carpet that we have here. Can't you have taken off your fucking shoes before you came into my fucking room and, ru and wiped your real world shit on my fucking rug? Seriously. Like, I'm not mad at Jerry Duggan for his storytelling. I'm like, I'm really questioning, like, why the fuck is it always bigots and fascists and these fucking stories and, and, and from the creators? This is just so obnoxious. Really, it's, 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 it, uh, yeah. I, who, uh, well, who told them that escapism can contain such, you know, you know, real life intersections? Well, that yeah, comes from fucking HR and the, and, and, and their Ivy League schools and 30 years of PC. That's where, you know, remember, this is a fucking corporate product, but I'm just like, see, like, you know, how, how do you, I'm, po I'm the positive one too. And I'm usually very positive about X-Men, but I mean, I mean, J Duggan didn't write that. Uh, who, somebody in the office wrote that, that copy. What copy I'm talking about? This copy here. No. And somebody, yeah, this is actually, I believe from the Marvel. Let's see. Like, well, let's look it up. Marvel X-Men. X-Men number 32. Let's see. We'll get to the Marvel page itself. X, no, X Men, not X. Mm, you, you illiterate individual. <laughs> no, not that one. That's what. <laughs> oh, never mind. Oh, here we go. It's Marvel.com. Yes, it's from Marvel.com, and it says the same. It, that that's from the Marvel.com's. Um, website that's from like the solicit it's, it has the same copy so when i copy writer hello at a magazine wrote some descriptive copy to sell uh, the, the 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 magazine in a solicit three months or more than three months ago <laughs> you know yeah um i know duggan didn't write that but it's like they use these words and Stamping anti-mutant bigots heads because remember all mutants are vulnerable marginalized communities. That's all they ever were. No, there's, there's I reject your 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 assertion there. And you forget you have a lack of imagination and you're forgetting Xavier's dream. End of rant. We're going to Venom issue 31. Is this Torin Grindbeck still? Yeah. Um, she's also writing, um, the carnage because carnage and venom go together like cookies and cream. Let me tell you, but, and, but there's going to be some, um, some carnage crossover as well. Uh, see symbiosis, necro symbiosis, necrosis part one. Yeah. The new venom carnage crossover begins here. I've been telling you venom's a fucking nightmare of a story to be reading for me. Um, but carnage is very i'm liking it i've been reading it since it's issue one it's out for uh a couple of months now and um i've been liking carnage because it, it's very much like say like the movie seven of which i barely like i've only seen once i'll never have to watch seven again what's in the box that's in the fucking box <laughs> oh gosh it's a sideshow of pepper pots, and they only sent one piece, Brad. Spoilers. Okay. Um, yeah, sideshow. I've been getting a lot of these sideshow ads. That's great because it's I've been getting them on my match page. So it's a nice kind of like weird like evaluation of like, hey, you can spend your money and time on your little toys or on these broads, you know, who you want to play with more. Hello. Would you like a cup of coffee? Pull up a chair. Grab a cup of whatever it is you're shoving under your nose today there, pal. We have an issue one, and I've been looking forward to this, and I hope it's still on the shelf. It's on my uh, pull list. Oh, behold all the variant covers. Let's look at the bear. Get away from the with your ads. Away with your ads. I mean you no harm. Oh, the East Side Peach Momoko variant. Yeah, there are 12... Variant covers. This is a the East Side Peach Momoko. This is only available at East Side Comics, and this is a Peach Momoko variant. I would, I want this. I love Peach Momoko variants. So this is the. It's got a trade dress. 
So it's the Peach Momoko variant with art by Peach Momoko. It's all written by Peach Momoko, and I'm going to keep saying Peach Momoko all the time. Here's the Mark Brooks variant cover. No thanks. Um, not a fan of his art style, but um, there's like another there's like a another girl who's a a weather witch, kind of like kind of stormish kind of powers. Let's see. This is In Hyuk Lee, if the armor variant. Armor is going to be a big part of this. I like armor as a character. Um, yeah, here you go again. I love this cover. And uh, oh gosh, what's her? I, I I'll remember her name when I read the book. But um, it's Ultimate X Men number one by Peach Momoko, written in art by. And um, I am really I've been looking forward to this with the um, the whole reset of the Ultimate Universe. This is a brand new character, and it's going to be a brand new take on the X Men. Where you, this is a one in 100 Mark Brooks variant. I <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure enough. I mean, like, I bet you he's a nice guy. I bet you his friends like him. You know, I love this. I want, this is the one I want. I want this one in 10 Peach Momoko design variant. This makes me happy. This, 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 this gives me much joy. I love this. And that, yeah, that's, uh, Ultimate X Men number one. Hey, that's the wrong button. Good thing I didn't. Good thing it wasn't my 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 browser's account. Jeez. Uh, it's, it's not only uh, per, it's not just Perch will tell you about uh, Riley Ray, Reed. So yeah, it's Peach Momoko. Oh, she's so cute. I like her. And uh, let's zoom out on this a little bit and see. Okay, only three issues have been solicited so far. But that goes to May. We have not got we have not got June's solicits yet. This is true. And um, here we go. Let's uh, bring that right back up. But yeah, ultimate. We, let's read the blurb for the Ultimate X Men. I've been looking forward to this. Visionary creator Peach Momoko from Demon Days and Star Wars Visions and. <laughs> You sneeze. That's why I had to take my other hat off because it's 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 usually overhanging on the the thing and it's like everything needs to go washing because it's so dusty in here. So I put it on and my my head started itching. So no, I just gotta like wash it. I don't I don't throw it in the dryer. I let it dry in the window. But yeah, I mean you can wash your you can wash your hats and they need a wash in here and there. They really do. You know. So do you, Pikachu. You're starting to get ripe. You know what I mean? There's nothing in the world that smells worse than a ripe Pikachu. You know, it's a little like ozone burnt tire and roasted garlic. Uh, oh, that's me? Oh, you're right. I'm the roasted garlic. Uh, creates a new generation of X-Men for an all-new universe. Hisako Ich uh, uh, Ichiki is a teenage girl. She's armor. She's she's really cool. Uh, who just wants to live a normal life. Go to school, hang out with her friends, ignore the political strife, broiling over after the events of the ultimate invasions. But life has other plans for her i burped sneezing burping next is farting all right bring it on <laughs> I call it, let's be tooting <laughs> rooting tooting um but in japan urban legends have sprung to life and brought some unusual new powers with them meet armor and may storm may storm's the other girl here with and she's like you know, may storm and a group of new Ultimate X Men, the likes of which you've never seen before. It's five ninety nine with forty pages. Um, and this is this this the common issue number one cover, done by Peach Momoko. Um, I love these covers. I love the I love Peach Momoko. She beguiles me. She tasks me. She tasks me. Mm. That's Khan from Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. And, um, yeah, Peach Momoko makes me think about art. She makes me like contemplate forms and function and storytelling. Um, she's got a really nice color pa palette and um, really, really nice manga style, you know, that Japanese kind of flavor to it. It's got like, it's got like the flavor of, 
of, of, of seaweed to a bento broth, which is like in everything, you know what I mean? Um, that's like, I, I know just a little bit about Japanese cuisine. I'm a chef and certain flavors are very harmonious and distinct of Japanese cuisine. Something like, you know, seaweed is, is a big part of that, you know, and making, making like that seaweed broth and that, you know, and that's the foundation of soups and, and of, of sauces and of the, well, lots of different things. I am going to enjoy this, hopefully, and uh, I've been looking forward to that. This has been a good book. A happy part of my um, of my digital pirate chest has been G. Willow Wilson's Poison Ivy, where we, where we still have room for cheesecake covers like this uh, for women's history month look and see we got the we check out this trade dress and it, it, it it's got you know it's it's quasi pride-ish too because it, it has some kind of like undefined spectrum so usually pride flags have have panel almost like panels strips definition um shading uh, you know and but this is just like it's more you know but this is also that's a cheesecake photo. That's that's woman in form and function. That's to be pleasing to the eye. It gets to be to be beheld. And part of that's part of Poison Ivy's story, too, is that she's a femme fatale. You can look, but you can't touch. She's poison, literally. She'll, you know what I mean? And she also has the power to sway men or women too, with you know her kisses which introduce a toxin, you know, and you know, wouldn't poison you. And um, she's very chesty. I like that. $4.99. Oh, so that's what DNA is. David Nakayama. We have a Yannick Paquette. Cardstock variant. That's a nice cover. So she, this is using uh, this is Pamela Isley's like experiences in in, in in grad school, and now she's becoming a a petty thief with her and her lover, the professor Jason Woodrue, and uh, who's taking advantage of his of his student. And. Um, Tula Lote cardstock variant. Look at this. Interesting, huh? It, this is like art appreciation. I, I really dig art. I dig art appreciation. I dig, and then here's the Dan, uh, the David Nakayama cover, virgin cover. See, we, and but we do get just we get the maker's mark, the DC maker's mark there, but there's no trade dress such as the the brand which is the title itself and the UPC barcode and the issue number. But um, yeah, that's our, that's our crime cover here. Indeed. It's been fun. I've been reading, I've been reading uh, poison Ivy for a couple of months now, and I'm impressed with that, that I'm, I'm liking it. I'm sticking with it. I'm not buying it. I, this is a, a nice part of my uh, of my digital pirate chest. Would I buy it? I don't know. And I'm not buying Catwoman either. But and I'm not buying Harvey uh, Harley uh, Harley Quinn either. But I am. I have been tuned in to all three of these female led, female written, Bat Family titles, and like you know, just and, but Poison Ivy's been pretty decent. Catwoman since Gotham Boar. Has been pretty decent for the past four issues. I've liked Nine Lives by Teeny Howard, and um, and then there's also this too. Also part of the Bat Family. How can you tell? Because you have the Batman signal. Oh, that means my laundry's done. <laughs> Pre-recorded for for Wednesdays. We do a live stream on Sundays at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern, but for, uh, Wednesdays on New Release Day. This is a pre-recorded show. 
just so you know, um, uh, I, I do, you know, premiere it at 4 p.m. So it's hopefully this is us right now. We're at my local comic book shop. I'm talking to the staff. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to other get. One of my favorite things is to talk to other um, other customers and be like, what do you got? What are you buying? You know, stuff like that. I love that. That's like, you know, just I love seeing what other people are buying. I love like talking to, like you know, parents who are like, dude, you brought your kid to the comic book shop. That's awesome. Like, you know, so you have a small person and I love that the staff know how to talk to kids like, OK, just keep your hands to yourself. You know what I mean? Don't knock over. They're great with kids. I love my local comic book shop. I'm there right now with you. Hopefully, you know, <laughs> but um, but yeah, this is Birds of Prey by Kelly Thompson. And um, I've been liking this. Actually, well, I like five. Oh, hello. I love a big Bardock cover. And um, I don't know. Chicks with tattoos don't do it for me. Yeah, sorry. I know that that's is that judgmental. I don't know. Chicks are judgmental, too. Ask me. I'm I've, I've, I'm still dating. Like, chicks, you know. oh my gosh, the worst thing in the world is to say that you're allergic to down or allergic to cats. Maybe is it mentioning allergy, you know, because it's like we can't go back to your place because you probably have down pillows, you know, shit like that, and or cats. And I'm, I'm definitely allergic to both. But it was it? It's a was that admitting some kind of weakness or something? But this is a great Pablo Villa Lobos cover. Uh, I love his his big Barda. This is that's a great cover. See, this is I would I would buy that. It's really nice. Women's History Month. Yeah, you see you see that that trade dress there. I mean, doesn't that look like a Pride logo too? I mean, is somebody is it you know? Whose choice was that? <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> it's it's supposed to be fun. It kind of is. It's QTUT. It's one in 25. And this is Birds of Prey issue seven. So it, it, it lived longer than its six issue initial run. So we have an, we have an, we have achieved an ongoing, sh uh, ongoing title. And with a new, story going in a with a new team apparently so may, perhaps like every arc black canary is going to assemble a new team of birds to prey upon the criminal elements and things hmm and we still have the dawn of dc trade dress which we're losing soon uh, apparently the dawn of dc it's been you know i heard it at west i'm uh, thinking critical that uh, dc is dropping the dawn of D, uh, the dawn of dc trade dress and initiative and um that's been uh going on for like 18 months new mission new team sin is alive and black with and back with black canary and gotham and the world didn't get destroyed but the cost was high and nobody's exactly sure what it means yet shocking revelations in the wake of the bird's first mission led dinah to a conspiracy against the birds of prey and a whole new mission new mission a new team <laughs> who wrote this hold on to your butts but your cigarette butts or like the person next to you because that might be inappropriate I mean, what are you trying to tell me dc comics I, I i don't get it we have star wars issue 44 by charles Sully. um the trial of lando calrissian all this like post dark droid stuff and it's like see can you notice han and, and carbonite it's like me oh, wrong cursor
My, oh, wow, was I mute? Oh, jeez. I'm sorry about that. Pika, I told you, don't touch the buttons. Good thing I you know, keep a heads up. Um, so, yeah, that was, that's... Um, all of these Star Wars comics are, like, set before Return of the Jedi. And... Um, I'm sorry about that with the mic there. It's like, you know, just I, I moved the, the arm of the, the microphone and so hopefully, hopefully you didn't left swipe me. Hopefully this ain't like match.com and, you know, just, you know, <laughs> aw. Let's see. The trial of Lando Calrissian. Now see after the events of dark droids. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but like we had literal time. So Star Wars came out in 1977 so did issue number one of the marvel comic and there's actually hullabaloo about that um so by the time empire strikes back comes out in 1980 you're about at like what issue 36 or so or, or around there i could look it up but like you know come on just go with it right now please um you get the Empire Strikes Back is released, but you also get the the official Marvel movie adaptation, which figures in canonically with the rest of the story. So now the story of the comic book has to reflect Empire Strikes Back, of course. And so we have this whole era between Empire and Jedi in the original Marvel comics, which we have the first appearance of the Mandalorian in issue 68 um, with Fen Shaisha. When we have like uh, Rick Olay, this kind of like weird Han Solo substitute that befriends Luke and um on the search for Han Solo. I remember um I'm currently like kind of buying all of these Marvel comics, these Marvel Star Wars comics from that age. Um I am uh looking for it too, because I had it as a kid. It's like Luke and Lando are on a planet. I think they're on Ord Mandel of all places, maybe. Uh, and they're they're tracking a bounty hunter who has a very familiar looking carbonite uh, obelisk with them. And uh, it turns out being um, uh, one of Greedo's people. He's not a Nemoidian. I, I, I see. I used to know all this stuff, all this chapter verse stuff. I seriously, I used to be that fan. Um, New Cunray's. He's, he's a Nemoidian. Okay, Greedo was a what? Greedo is a... Come on. Greedo, Greedo not Greedo. Greedo Star Wars. There you go, Greedo. No, not the rapper. He's a Rodian. Gosh darn it. See, like, you know, I would... Thank you. Not a Twi'lek. <laughs> Wookie. It's not a Wookie. It's a Wookie. Jeez, get it straight, you nerds. We should push you into a, a locker. But yeah, so at least the all those tales came to an end when Return of the Jedi comes out, which is like you know part of Star Wars, Marvel Star Wars. So so after Return of the Jedi, yeah, this new playing field until issue one hundred and seven, where they wrapped everything up. Um, But there's only so much stuff you can fit in. I mean, like, hopefully Star Wars is going to reset and have... Maybe they could do a whole new era, you know? But like Star Wars Prime, this Star Wars book, this is about the event. This, it was once billed as the adventures of Luke Skywalker. We can't have that anymore due to cultural difficulties. In 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 in, in postmodern academics, seriously, this, that's the only thing getting in the way of the adventures of Luke Skywalker. You can have plenty more adventures in Star Wars, sure, but there are, you know, ah, wow, Avengers issue seven seventy seven, and this is the Jed McKay stuff. Um, wow, how many? Let's see, we have five variant covers. Like Mark Brooks's floating heads for this 
Oh, I gotta tell Ethan about this. He's gonna have a field. He's gonna he's gonna trash cast this. I don't approve of that. I do actually. I watched the shit out of that. <laughs> Three ninety nine still. Marvel made a big deal at comics at the Comics Pro convention well, two weeks ago, making an announcement saying that they're going to hold the line at three ninety nine on certain books. Um, sure, I believe you. Uh huh. Were you going down like 15, 16 pages or something? Yeah. Um, let's see. What else is out this week? It's a kind of a big week. Let's see. The Spectacular Spider-Men. It's Miles and, and Peter teaming up. Got Greg Reisman. Umberto Ramos. I love Umberto Ramos. All right. Wow. Look at all these variant covers we got. Those are those are retail exclusives. These are incentive covers. Umberto Ramos, one in one hundred virgin cover. That's so cool. I do love Umberto Ramos's art. Oh, come on, he draws one of my favorite Spider Men. I would I would get this just for the Umberto Ramos art because he literally does draw one of my favorite Spider Man. $4.99, 40 pages. It's just like I've got so many issues, number of one of different Spider Man comics over the years, like Marvel Knight Spider Man, um, Spider Man's Tangled Web, Web of Spider Man. Um, they're like just they, they, they never stop. I mean, like. I just, yeah. But yeah, I mean, like sometimes I'm, yeah, I'm just in for creators, and I would be in for just, I would be in just for Mar, uh, for Umberto Ramos, of whom I met at Wicked Comic Con last year. He was a great guy. I mean, just really nice guy. We got to talk to him for a few minutes, and I, I got to say thank you, thank you for your Spider Man. You draw. One of my favorite Spider-Man. And he's like, get out of here. And I was like, no, no, I'm serious. You do. And I was like, I was like, in like, I don't know if you noticed, but in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man three, when the Venom symbiote is like in act three, and it's just like, it looks just like yours when you were doing spectacular Spider-Man back when Flash was like dying. I can't, no, it was, it was, uh, it was Eddie Brock. He was dying. And so like the, the, the symbiote was like, you know, couldn't understand like you know what was going on or or that yeah i it was some good stuff though uh dr strange 13 we got shazam number nine josie campbell writing this yet nope we still got mark wade art by uh, M emanuela lupacino she's pretty cute mm. we got three variant covers all day one incentive cover it's a one in 25 for an issue nine at 399 of 32 pages uh, we got the creeper, the beautiful Dan Mora cover. Dan Mora covers are, are, are have great line art, but then you get all of this digital shading effects. See all those like the li little dots. You see that the texture and the shadowing on the cape, you know, that's like. Those, these are all digital gradients. No inks were harmed during the production of this comic art. <laughs> Gunslinger Spawn still at two ninety nine. That's good. Let's see, King Spawn for two ninety nine. I don't think my 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 my, my store carries Spawn. I could I could put it on my pull list. I'd probably get it, but I don't read it. But it's probably they don't probably make anything off it or something. I have no idea. This is a great cover. It's cheesecakey. You know, it's not revealing. It's not, you know, it's cutesy ootsy. Kinda, you know what I mean? But it's like, you know, Space Girl. Cute Space Girl. I I, I like that. Kind of reminds me of Aaron Lepresti's Carter, which I backed as a, uh, oh, this is the Mark Brooks headshot. <laughs> The Ben Harvey variant cover by Ben Harvey. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And yep, there's the color. 
You see it? Oh, it just that's, the boring background. Yeah. You just we, we we saw with the well we, we literally see with, with like you know this is the line art. Okay, well, here we go. Here is the line art. This is what the artist drew. You know, probably and he probably probably on paper maybe you know, but yes, that's the shading they used. Um, this is this is pencil and inked, and um, everything else. That's the sketch variant, yeah. All right. Now everything else is digital. That's right. Especially that background. What's the big deal with you in the background of digital stuff? I don't know. It's just a matter of taste, dude. Sorry. Let's see. It's going at least eight issues. Cover coming soon. We've got... Ah, see? They're hiding, they're hiding the covers. She's in a romantic relationship with Jack of Hearts and uh, who comes off kind of baby girl. That's you want to, we were talking about this on Wes on, on Saturday and uh, like the whole thing of the, the baby girl fad of like non toxic, idealistic, you know, for progressive urban women. Huh? I didn't see any smoke coming out of my mouth. No, nope. can't blame me. Um, <laughs> Rainbow Rowell is writing this. The conclusion of She-Hulk and Jack of Hearts' epic space effort. Your heart is not ready for this issue. The action will get your heart pumping just in time for us to break it. <clears throat> Maybe that's the last issue. That's the May solicit. They have a kind of a star-crossed love that, like, kind of like this the storm, uh, like the the uh, the rogue gambit thing, like, because you can't touch rogue. But, but oh. her and gambit are married. So how are they? You know, how do they get to like you know be conjugal? You know, it's none of my business. It's, it, that's other people's. See, this is fascination with like you know superhero sex organs. Stan Lee called this way back in in Mall Rats. <laughs> it's out of hand. Like these advertisements, bloody hell. Jeez. Doctor Strange number thirteen, beautiful Alex Ross covers, but been kind of like on the fence with this uh, with this, this is written by Jed McKay um, 399 28 pages Jed McKay Pascal Ferry returns great you get two variant you got one very open order variant cover with Clea and you get a an incentive cover by Nic Nicoletta Boldari Boldari But, you know, what we get here is, you know, it's like Night in New York with Doctor Strange. We got Black Cat. We got the original non-gender swapped Taskmaster here. And then is that like one of the Moon Knight people? Is that the new Moon Knight or is that Hunter's Moon, like who is a character of the... I see, I don't, I don't know any of these like moon knight characters and uh, i've been like reading it for a couple of months too and i still don't know anything about this stuff it's fine i'm still happy to just be reading these comic books and experiencing them and then talking about them on sundays void rivals number seven my friend al in the chat's so overjoyed i hope that you get your copy and you're on your pull list uh Darak and solita traverse the northern wasteland danger lurks around every corner this is written by uh, by, uh, by Robert Kirkman, and um, I got one issue of this. I got the the one in twenty five 
uh, variant cover just in case. You never know. Because it was a key issue, apparently. It was like the the first issue of this, the, the Energon universe. So, uh, but uh, I haven't been reading Void Rivals. It's, it hasn't been my cup of tea. The interior art is like, you know, just like not for me. People like it, though. It's got this, it does share a cartooniness that I've seen before, especially someone like Pear Berg, the artist known as Narwhal. Um, so it's, it's, it's just because it's cartoony doesn't, you know, you can't dismiss it. I mean, look at like, you know, Art Spiegelman's mouse. Uh, just like cart you know, cartooning works. Right? Look at Charles Schultz's Peanuts. I mean, look at Bill Watterson's Calvin and Hobbes. I mean, cartoon just because it's something's cartoonish does not diminish its its storytelling or its uh, or even its its art. But it's about expression, and um, so Void Rival has that. And, and they look, they have. Uh, a one in ten, a one in twenty-five, and a one in one and a one in fifty variant covers for Void Rivals. Let's see, let's, let's see where this out a little. Let's see how long this goes. It's at least solicited up to uh, issue nine, and look who's on issue number nine here. See, because remember, Energon Universe is um has, is crossover, so this is going to cross over eventually with not only Transformers but with Duke. And Cobra Commander, if those are ongoings and not just going to end up being, you know, minis. So, uh, but that is Springer, the Autobot known as Springer. I believe he's Generation Three, or at least Season Three. He was like, or um, as I was a Generation One. Well, I mean, I don't mean Generation Three trans. Like, I was a G One Transformer fan, and I aged out about the time the movie came out. Springer was one of the new Autobots in the future from the movie in that season three. Springer is also the German word for night, K-N-I-G-H-T, night. You know, um... <laughs> yeah. Let's see. What else is out today? I hope you're having... Oh, Captain America 7 by J. Uh, J. Michael Straczynski. And uh, we got to, oh here here's that Mark Brooks variant cover again and look I want to look I want to see like look the headshot variant come on let's like this is the line art that that's he, he looks a lot like Brian Hitch I'm I'm you know that's what I was like I kind of like this is Mark Brooks this is I because this looks oh this is more like Brian Hitch than you know like I'm not too familiar with Mark Brooks's art. And, um, but, okay, so that was the line art, but let's look at the line art and we're going to look at, oh God, a squirrel girl version. Yay. Okay. And look, see, there's that, that back of the, the digital bubbles, the, the, the fake dots, you know, that is, that, that that's a trendy digital filter. Yeah. And that's all digital coloring and digital, you know, stuff heaped upon line art. Hmm. How do you feel about that? How does that make you feel? And this is a new, um, a new arc. Let's see how many issues are solicited. Is this is solicited up to issue nine. Let's see. So it's going to go further than nine. All right. So we ask questions here. We'd like to know. Oh, boy. The Last Ronin 2. <clears throat> Re-evolution number one. Eight ninety nine, fifty two pages. I'll be picking this up if it's if we still have a copy. This could be a key issue. This is de uh, debuting the, the four brand new turtles. But what I read a digital pirated copy of this and i ended up liking it a lot i would love to have any of these wow look at all of the re the, the wow look at let's look at let's look at some of these let's look at all of these variant covers it's a variant cover a go go here 25 different covers but idw is a struggling company and they need to, you know, get their market share. And Turtles and Last Ronin specifically is being known as 
the title that saved IDW. This is a Stan Sakai cover. I would be totally down for this one. Oh, that would be so cool. But I am getting an, uh, an issue with this because it could be a, it could be a key. Because like, yeah, I don't even recall the, the, them saying their names in this. So we have some mystery. But it's um, what, what I one thing I liked. I'll tell you about it. Uh, that it respected the Mirage Studios origin story, not the IDW reboot origin story. When IDW got the Turtles license over a decade ago, they started with their own issue number one and their own origin story. And specifically, the divergent point was kind of like uh, Splinter is a reincarnation of 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 of, of the past master and um had something to do with mutating the turtles himself and um we're in the the mirage origin oh look this is an eastman that's great oh i like that a lot so yeah i'm going to get me an issue of this and um It was, it was a really decent issue, number one. So if you want to take a chance on a new comic book this week, I'm going to suggest to you take take a chance on TMNT, The Last Ronin 2, Re-Evolution, number one. It's a really decent issue, number one. It's good storytelling. And, um, yeah, written by Tom Waltz and Kevin Eastman. The art was pretty good. And um, there's mystery. Oh, here are the names. Oh, okay, those were their names. Was mo okay, I had... You know, these I wonder what the names signify because remember, the four turtles were basically the four artists that are on the, 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 the awning at the AI in Chicago. It says they're Raphael, Donatello, Michelangelo, and um, and Leonardo. Like, literally, that's like that's a, that could be a Chicago joke for all we know, a museum pun. But yeah, these are the four turtles Moha, Odin, Uno, and Yi. And I wonder what their names represent. And if they, you know, and then Casey Marie Jones. Yeah. <laughs> Daughter of April O'Neil and um, and Casey Jones. And it's set in the future after Last Ronin 1, of course. But this is, like I said, this respects that this is a Mirage continuity story. I'm in. Just for that fact. And, um... What else are we getting? So I'll be picking that. Blue Beetle 7. Cool. Walking Dead Deluxe number one. Carl with his eye got blown out. <clears throat> and um, and he survived. And But, you know, hey, show uh, fans of the show. I mean, geez. It's, it's a much different story in the comic book. I'll tell you how Weapon X-Men number one is. On Sunday. And this is about a multiverse team of Wolverines. Didn't isn't that what Sabretooth is doing over on Wolverine with Ben Percy in Lavalley for 10 issues called Sabretooth War? Sabretooth Victor Creed got a, a, a multiverse squad of himself. Like a Wolverine revenge team squad. <clears throat> Thanos 4 of 4. We've got Fall of the House of X. So I, I have to read this. I read them all, to be honest with you. You know, we have so many variant covers. But I think she, I think she's adorable. Oh, we, and Mom Villani and so, uh, so they, they, you know, they 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 wrote they they read a previous the they the new mutant. So they they're reunited and telling another story that uh Maybe there'll be more dream sequences. The writers of the hit, Miss Mar Ms. Marvel, the hit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, yeah, Imam Valani. She's like, you know, she's grown up right before our eyes, man. She's a freshman in college where she can like get her, download her, her feminist frequency or something, you know, and challenge her Muslim parents with. You know, American idea with American postmodernist ideology. Hopefully, they'll that, that would be interesting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not <laughs> three issues at least, but remember, that's 
These are issue ones solicited in three months in advance. So blah, blah, woof, woof, all down the line, you know, back to the action here. Let's see. Ah, Teen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Saturday Adventures. This is a pretty reliable book. Superman 78, The Metal Curtain. That's been This has been a, the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, issue number five, The Century. Oh, God. Thank God this is over. Neil Before Zod, number three. Okay. I'm in for that. Um, this is going 12 issues. But uh, there is a series of giant-sized books. And, um, oh, because it's the 50th anniversary of the giant-sized, you know, book marvel giant size this is just a terrible book itself too this is the last issue um century versus century blah 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 like i think let me just check that real quick down here yeah only solicited four issues <clears throat> yes indeed so it's going to be a fight between the centuries, or will they learn to get along and at least, you know, dispatch that, you know, the annoying privileged one that's been trying to kill them, you know, just Mallory Gibbs with the Ryan Topper and um, see Ryan's the one with the, with the attitude problem and wants all the power to himself. He doesn't want to share his power and his privilege and his ex access and his resources. And he wants to take them from the other peoples. Specifically this one, Mallory Gibbs, the little lady of color with a disability and who lives, lives in a wheelchair and just has, you know, and just, you know, there's just no, just, I'm just going to read it and just say, yeah, that happened. And it's probably corporate syzygy with um, the direction they were going in. For casting Sentry in the live action stuff. You know, that could be it. Let's see what else. Crave number four. No thanks. The Batman Scooby Doo Mysteries, $2.99. That DC can sell books for $2.99. Don't you ever forget that. Okay. They just don't. No variant covers. Yeah, exactly. You don't need one. <laughs> it's because it's just a you know, sometimes you know a funny book's just a funny book and um uh, yeah a 299 comic book because it's made for kids but it's interesting because the ads are kind of just kind of the same ish i'm saying that because i got last year's uh, last month's issue and um yeah the 299 Batman Mysteries. Yeah. But we got YA stuff. I haven't even heard of this, but it's by, it's by Grace Ellis, drawn by Penelope Rivera Gaylord. And it's Diana's in the hero's journey. It's not the heroine's journey. They're not actresses anymore. They're actors. You're being mean, Sully, with their distended us. That's, you know... Clark and Lex, maybe they're shipping by now. You know, who you know, Metropolis Grove, another new graphic novel for kids, a graphic novel for young adults. That's what it says. You're bending back the yeah, it's a, this is a floppy, a graphic novel for kids. Okay, a graphic novel for kids. That's four graphic, that's three. Oh, here we go again. But at the familiar property, it, you know, Teen Titans go. A graphic novel, a new graphic novel for kids available now. And. Wow. Wow. You know what I'm wowing at? interior ads there are there are no interior ads the only ads are on the inside the outside cover the two inside covers and the final page with the indicia 
on the Indicia page, we usually get <clears throat> a preview art of next month's issue. But yeah, I mean, there are no ads in this story. Not even in the, not even in the center. You didn't. Even, there's not even a splash page though either. You know, sometimes we get a huge splash page in the center like that. <clears throat> but yeah, the Batman Scooby Doo mysteries. It's a. It was a fun book too. Uh, Two ninety nine. And I got it just just to look at the ads because that's what we do here. We look at ads in books. These are peri these are periodical publications on a newsstand, you know, or traditionally in the 20th century. But guess what? We're not in the 20th century anymore. We're in the 21st century. Oh gosh, here we go. Here's a here's a good one for you that I'm gonna avoid. I'll read, but uh, it's 20th Century Studios imprint for five ninety nine. It's what if aliens? What if Carter Burke had lived? But here's the rub. Carter Burke was played by the actor Paul Reiser. And you might know him from the NBC sitcom. Um, uh, what was it? Uh, Baby Don't Stop. Oh, Heaven Can Wait. Um, oh, geez. What was it? You know, someone, someone shouting it out from the back row right now. Being like, Paul Reiser sitcom. Let's see if I can't run, you know, uh, you know, my two dads. No, but that, he was on my two dads and um, mad about you. That was it. Yeah. Mad about you. But Paul Reiser was Carter Burke and James Cameron's 1986 aliens. The smarmy uh, Wayland Yutani executive who uh, is there to ensure the xenomorph is acquired, you know, so. Um, there are variant covers. A Scotty Young variant cover. Wow, you got a one in fifty Addy Gradnoff variant cover, and it's a Virgin cover. Uh, one in twenty-five. Um, wow, for for what? For, for aliens. Let's see. What it's solicited up to three issues. This specific what if alien? So maybe if what if. Carter Burke succeeded, I guess, you know, if like he was able to, you know, impregnate the crew with eggs and bring them back to Wheeling Utani and to weapon. We kind of seen these like if you've not if been reading aliens as long as I have, especially back in the, the earliest Dark Horse iteration, that was like always part of it. And the most scariest part is like when, like, of course you can't control the xenomorph. You only can pretend to. You only you only think you might be, but it's a lot smarter than you think. Let's see, the Last Mermaid number one, Yul Carter, uh, uh, my friend at, uh, at uh, Fantastic Comics of Berkeley, California, suggested this, and. Um, I'll keep my eye out for it. $3.99, 32 pages on Image Comics, issue number one. And um, a lone mermaid roams an endless wasteland on a quest beyond reason. Maybe she's like, maybe it's like a fishbowl and, and a power suit. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Let's oh, check it out. You know, take a chance on it. On a, on a new comic book. There's DC's The Batman. The first night. Or first night. And. Um, oh Dan Jurgens is writing this. Oh awesome. Dan Jurgens has wrote a lot. Of good DC books. But it's a retelling. Of. You know, it's, it's Batman. Set in 1939. From, from whence he originated. Let's look at Weapon X. Let's see how many freaking variant copies we got here. Oh, we got the Mark Brooks headshot. Again. <clears throat> and, um, oh, spoiler. If you didn't know that Weapon X, uh, that Wolverine from, um, from Age of Apocalypse, he had like, <laughs> that, was, that was a great reveal. 
It really was. That was fun. And look, an action figure variant. I love action figure variant covers. I really do. Uh, this Look, the Goblin Queen. She is a clone of Jean Grey. That is Madeline Pryor, clone of Jean Grey. Mother, biological mother of one Nathan Summers. Otherwise known as Cable. Yes, and it's uh, five ninety nine for forty pages. Let's see how many is this going? At least three pit, three issues, four issues, four issues. Mm -hmm. What else we got this week? I hope you're having a great day. I hope you're feeling awesome. I hope you're doing awesome. Thank you for tuning in today. Oh, look, Star Wars, The High Republic. I've actually been enjoying some of these. This is High Republic, High Republic Volume 3, so it's like Season 3. So, um, it look, five variant covers for, for, for an issue. This is issue, issue 4. It's a random issue 4. Um, Kevin Scott. And look at all these editors. We have... Five editors, Mikey Basso, great Grace Ortis, Danny Kazim, Mark Pen uh, 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 Penicia, Penicia, and then Robert Simpson. And um, those are your star. That's your that. Those are your Star Wars editors. Their Star Wars has legitimately like usually eight or nine Marvel books a month. Sometimes five, sometimes six. And then you have miniseries, too. So it's like they're really, you know, trying to, you know, get the most out of their license here. You know, they, you know Disney spent a lot for that, huh? And um, let's see. Anything else? We're getting to the bottom of the list. And we sometimes can find surprises. Like One Piece. Issue number 1109. Ain't that cool? Let's see. Godzilla, the best of Destroya from IDW. Uh, Marvel Mest Haves. It's a free comic. Let's see. Look, Betty and Veronica. Friends Forever Sleepover. Yeah, but are they shipping yet? Are you, are we, are we have we put them together into like, you know, are we like, have have Betty and Veronica ditched the idea of Archie for each other? And is, is that just like some kind of cherry pop tart, you know, fantasy, you know, that I'm having? Um, what else? Knights of the Dinner Table, number 311. That's cute. That's really fun. And we're back down to Ninja High School that I said, if I found Ninja High School, I would give it a chance. And that's it for new comics this week that we've previewed. Indeed. Is... Did I just hit mute? I, I hit the wrong button again. Wow. Pika, I told you, don't hit the buttons. But yeah, anything on the list of comics to talk about? <clears throat> list of uh, in the show notes? No, we just have another bag of uh, of books that we've got from our local comic book shop. Make sure you get your supplies at your local comic book shop. Your bags, your boards, and your boxes—they could use the business. They're a local business. They are an independent bookstore. So yeah, like I get my supplies at my LCS. My local books, my local comic book shop, because, you know, I don't get them from my online supply chain. I tell you that much. I could be saving a buck or two, but, you know, I like spending money. It, you straighten up, man. Seriously. What's wrong with you guys? No slouching on the job. Gee. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in today. It's the new release. It's new comic book day. 
And uh, yeah, we've been just been going over what I'll be getting, what you could be getting. Let me know in the comment section. And please like and subscribe. And if you're new to the channel, yeah, turn on those notifications. We're still a growing channel here. So um, thank you so very much. God bless. Namaste. Good luck. And we will see you again in those funny pages. Ciao. Bye-bye.